Welcome to Effective Life Church News. We are about to uh, review uh, what has been happening over the last few hours, few days. Uh, we have received breaking news that the well-known teacher, this so-called Jesus of Nazareth, has been sentenced to uh, death by crucifixion on account of a charge of blasphemy. Uh, extraordinary news. We did not expect this by any way. We know that he just came into Jerusalem uh, quite triumphantly. Yet he has been sentenced, we can confirm he has been sentenced to death by crucifixion on account of blasphemy, we are told. Uh, this follows an extraordinary few days and events, as you'll know if you've been watching what's been going on. Uh, but we've put together a special report just to bring you up to spill in case you've missed what's actually happened in the lead up to this extraordinary situation. Uh, Jesus himself uh, entered into Jerusalem uh, on a donkey. Uh, we understand or many expected him to come into Jerusalem with it being Passover but uh, many had an expectation that this Jesus would come in some form of military might or uh, with horses and chariots, but apparently he chosen specifically uh, to come in on a donkey. Uh, the timing of Jesus' coming in is absolutely perfect in the sense of uh, Jerusalem is absolutely full to the brim for the Passover celebrations. Uh, when Jesus came in, they were throwing palm trees down and leaves on the street. They were taking off their clothes and throwing them down on the street as a sign of recognising a king coming in. And Jesus was uh, afforded all those kind of uh, all that kind of treatment. Uh, but the atmosphere we see is now very, very different to a joyous celebration. People were pushing and pulling, trying to get a look at the so-called Messiah. Now we understand the, the temperature has turned quite dramatically against him. Uh, in actual fact, we're told that there's been quite a violent attitude to this so-called Jesus. Uh, Multitudes were shouting, uh, we, we, we were told that they were saying Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's a representation of God the Father and blessed is he who comes in his name. Yet now these same people who just welcomed Jesus in to Jerusalem uh, are now demanding he be put to death. So we're going to try and fill you in on exactly what is happening. Chaotic things going on right now. There's all sorts of rumours. This is uh, mind-blowing uh, for all of us. Many have said that this Jesus was a prophet from uh, Galilee, that he was a prophet from uh, Galilee. Uh, now they're saying that he's actually a blasphemer. Uh, it's staggering to think, just a few days ago, that Jesus came in and the people were so excited about it. And now such a sudden change, such a harshness has come about. Many thought that in actual fact with Jesus, this would be a new era. Uh, Israel, Jerusalem had been under the rule of the Roman Empire for just over a hundred years. We're currently still under Roman occupation and you know a lot of people are uh, upset there's a sense of movement in society they're fed up with this rule they're fed up with domination and many believing that Jesus had actually come and was going to put an end and overthrow this Roman occupation and this Roman occupation came in by a bizarre set of circumstances. Uh, Rome was successfully expanding its empire right across Europe, uh, all the way from Spain to Syria. Uh, after the death, we're told, of the Jewish queen, Alexander Salome, her two sons began to fight for power and a civil war began to take place in Judea. 
Uh, both princes separately called in the help of the Roman general Pompey, who was more than happy to get involved at the time. This is a hundred years ago. This is why we're under this current occupation. Uh, what should have been sorted out in a weekend, a weekend summit really, uh, would be a common thing, in actual fact turned out with uh, the Roman Empire ruling and dominating Israel uh, for the past 100 years, including this very time and this very day. So there's a lot of unrest, there's a lot of uh, upset, the Jewish people want to be free, they want uh, the right to govern themselves. So many believe that Jesus had come to do something about that. Uh, so we're just going to look briefly at the background of Jesus. Uh, you know, some people know a lot about him, others don't seem to know so much. But what is his background? Who is this Jesus? Now, our researchers have, have told us that Jesus is from uh, Nazareth in Galilee, uh, reported to be the son of a carpenter and his wife Mary. Uh, Jesus, born in Bethlehem, uh, we've learned that he lived with his parents for some years. They'd actually emigrated down to Egypt, uh, apparently on the run. Uh, they returned some years later. Uh, some have said uh, and speculated that in actual fact, uh, his father, Joseph, might not be the biological father. Uh, there's all sorts of rumours going around. Uh, we've been unable to get any more information uh, on his father. We know that his mother has been a big follower of her son. Uh, Jesus is known to have shown interest in the religious world uh, from a very young age. We're told that on one occasion, at the age of 12, he was found in the temple uh, with the teachers of the temple actually listening to his opinion on scripture. So we, we know from a young age, very learned, uh, a great understanding, and we're told that in actual fact in the temple, the, the word used, they were amazed at his understanding. Uh, after being baptised in later life, he was baptised uh, by John the Baptist, who we understand is a relative of Jesus. And uh, in actual fact, it was John wanting to be baptised by Jesus, but Jesus uh, resisting that and saying that John must baptise him. Uh, there's rumours that at this point, or from this point, he gathered momentum, especially in a form of power, some sort of supernatural abilities seem to have took place uh, at that point. There was a quickening of what was going on in and around Jesus, gathering more followers. Uh, he was soon, soon followed by a group of 12 followers Allegedly, he handpicked them. Most of these men are uneducated. Some have a bit of education, tax collectors, fishermen, all sorts of men. But a, a relatively small group of just 12 disciples, seeming to be his advisors or close team, men that he appears to be training for some sort of future work, maybe, or to serve in office under his leadership. On another occasion, his wider disciples had sent them out into groups of two to heal the sick, uh, telling people that the kingdom of God was near and he had empowered them with the word. Over the last few years, Jesus had began teaching multitudes of people that the kingdom of God was near, uh, even being reported that on an occasion, he had gathered multitudes, one occasion of 5,000 people rushing out to actually hear this, this carpenter's son, uh, who had no formal training, uh, speak. And yet they came, 5,000 men with entourage of wives and children, and yet on another occasion, 4,000 men. On top of that, if that doesn't amaze us enough, <laughs> it's this crazy idea in this report that he actually fed them, that, that he actually fed them with uh, two fish and five loaves. And it, not only did he feed over 5,000, but there was food left over 
which he got his disciples to, uh, to gather up into baskets. His message seems to be uh, straight down the line. He's a straight talker. Uh, it seems to be a message of repent or perish. Very simple, repent or perish. He claims he is the Son of God. He claims he's come to save sinners from their sin, uh, not just those who are currently alive, but sinners from around the world. Uh, quite a bizarre statement for a young carpenter from Nazareth. But that is his claim, and it's a repent or perish, saying that you either choose the kingdom of heaven or suffer what hell may bring. Uh, but many have followed him. He was often seen preaching and teaching in the temple while he travelled from village to village. Uh, people have heard him say that he was the son of God, that he's the Christ or the Messiah, which means the Anointed One, the Saviour. Uh, others have heard him say that God himself, Jehovah, actually sent him on this mission and that he was doing and fulfilling the will of his Father. So not only does he claim this Jesus to be uh, sent by God on some form of supernatural mission, but on top of that he claims that God is his father, Jehovah. Uh, he's known to perform many miracles. Uh, we've had uh, accounts from many people saying that they were healed, some uh, being blind, others are being mute, some are being deaf. Uh, there was one woman well known to all of us here, uh, the woman known as, uh, with the issue of blood. And uh, we know we had seen her for many years, I think 12 years she's had this complaint, but yet seeing Jesus, she reached her hand out uh, uh, to receive some sort of healing uh, in amongst the crowd. And uh, from what we understand, it is actually true, she was healed. Lepers apparently being healed, the skin, uh, uh, skin condition, the complaint, uh, completely disappearing from their bodies, uh, raising people from the dead as well. It's a, it's a remarkable CV if you look at it that way. Some people have viewed Jesus again as more of a politician. So we're just trying to really get an idea as to who this Jesus is, why he would be arrested, why is he such a threat when he appears to be doing good. Now we understand that on the first day of the festival of unleavened bread we have received news that Jesus had called a special meeting with his advisors or let's call them disciples, these followers of Jesus to celebrate the Passover meal and then a special meal taking place with his disciples in an upper room. Uh, uh, we understand that Judas had left uh, one of the disciples, Jesus, was seen leaving quite early that evening. And then leading to the arrest, the, the, these are the reports that have come in. Uh, now, we're understanding that shortly after this, we're informed that of the bombshell who had only received, that Jesus, who had only received a kingly reception just a few days before, was arrested in a garden at midnight. Uh, kind of strange time to arrest somebody so late at night, but he was arrested uh, uh, in the dark, in the garden. Uh, reports say that Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives. Uh, in many respects, we're told that's no surprise. Quite a common place that Jesus would seem to find uh, some sort of comfort, connection with his Father in heaven, a place that he would go for prayer, uh, to seek the face of God. And he was there whilst uh, this arrest had taken place late into the evening uh, with his disciples. So the disciples were with him, minus Judas Iscariot, who we know had left the scene some hours earlier. Uh, we understand he was praying, and whilst he was praying, his disciples had actually been sleeping, so we understand. Uh, some eyewitnesses say that they heard Jesus 
uh, in the distance praying uh, and we understand this statement actually came from Jesus himself as he seemed to be in some kind of emotional torture or turmoil uh, saying father if you are willing take this cup from me uh, yet not my will but yours be done uh, a strange request we, we believe it's something maybe to do with with why he alleges he was sent here but he I'll read it again it says father if you are willing take this cup from me Yet not my will, but yours be done. Uh, allegedly three times this has happened, saying the same prayer, and uh, we understand he was wrestling. There's one report saying that in actual fact he was in such anguish that his sweat turned to drips of blood. Uh, quite astonishing. We know that can happen scientifically, uh, but a very strange thing. And then Jesus seems to have gone quiet from that point. Uh, we understand it was shortly after that that uh, a group uh, arrived, the chief priest, the officers of the temple guard, the elders, and most surprisingly of all, Judas Iscariot, the chosen disciple who had been with Jesus earlier celebrating the Passover meal, was actually not just with them, but heading up, walking at the front of this, this mob is the only way really we can describe it. Uh, witnesses heard Jesus looking and saying to Judas, uh, we're told that they were looking at each other face to face and Jesus had looked into the eyes of his beloved friend and he's, he's reported that his statement was, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Jesus's eyes filled with tears. Uh, Judas had kissed Jesus. In actual fact, uh, we understand he had smothered him with kisses. Uh, people say that this was a, a, a way of informing uh, the, the arresting group exactly who Jesus was. Uh, but Jesus obviously broken hearted through the portrayal of this man that has been with him for some years, uh, a close ally, a friend, and yet it appears to be in Jesus' moment of greatest need that even his friends have turned against him, this one Judas. Other sources have revealed that Judas had actually, we, we understand that Judas, this is amazing news, that Jesus, Judas had actually sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest. It's known that the chief priest, we, we know it's been common knowledge that they were plotting for some time to arrest Jesus. There had often been altercations between them. And from what we understand, Judas had actually left the upper room, the supper room, and he'd gone to meet with the chief priests and the religious leaders, and they had made a deal for 30 pieces of silver. It's amazing what price people will sell their friends out for. Incredible. And Jesus, who from what we can understand appears to be innocent, has been sold out for 30 pieces of silver. Bear in mind, this is not nothing small. This is leading to the arrest and the possible crucifixion. It's understood that uh, during the arrest, we understand there was a scuffle between Jesus' disciples, uh, one called Peter, uh, attacking one of the servants of the high priest and cutting his ear off with a sword. Uh, but amazingly, even in such turbulent times, Jesus again moved as he'd done so many times with compassion and has healed the servant of the high priest. Uh, as he was being arrested, Jesus uh, had rebuked by the sounds of it, those with him saying, am I leading a rebellion that you come to me with swords and clubs? Every day I was in the temple with you, in the temple courts, you did not lay a hand on me. 
But this is your hour of darkness. This is your hour when darkness reigns. Now, very powerful words coming from Jesus to the arresting authorities. Uh, they had been in the temple with Jesus on many occasions. Uh, it's possible that they've left it to this late hour for fear of the public getting involved and wanted to do this undercover. We don't really quite know their motive, but nonetheless, and we understand at that point Jesus was tied up and led away. Uh, the group that was with him, the disciples, had fled. Uh, none, there have been at this point no reports of the disciples, his closest allies and friends, uh, what he saw his family around him throughout his working life have all disappeared. Well, let's just briefly look at the background of this man, uh, Judas. This man, Judas, a uh, close follower of Jesus, close friend of Jesus. Uh, why would Judas betray him? Uh, we don't know a lot about Judas Iscariot, but I'll give you the information that's coming in. Uh, it's known that it was very close to Jesus, uh, uh, again, chosen by Jesus himself. Uh, Jesus obviously saw something in Judas that maybe others didn't. Uh, he was the only, interesting point, he was the only disciple who was not from Galilee. He was the only disciple of the Twelve who was not from Galilee. Uh, we understand that Judas uh, had an expectation that Jesus maybe would have become an important political figure and uh, really uh, rising up a political group to overthrow uh, the Roman occupation in Jerusalem. Uh, but we, it's understood that Jesus never really quite made the right political moves uh, for something like that to happen. Rather, spending his time uh, healing the sick, uh, caring for people, uh, even accepting uh, prostitutes as a part of his following and saying that they had been cleansed by his forgiveness. Uh, some close to Judas saying that they believed that once Jesus was arrested, uh, uh, Judas would try and start some sort of party. There's a bit of confusion. We don't really know much more than that at this point. Uh, it's known that he looked, uh, Judas was the uh, treasurer. He looked after the funds for Jesus. Uh, there had been disagreement on a couple of occasions, so we're told. We're told that uh, uh, Judas had been upset on a couple of occasions, that uh, finances were not being used the way he thought they should be. And, uh, you know, one of the easiest things we know that people fall out over is finances. But nonetheless... Uh, this is what we understand. And a more interesting point is, in actual fact, some suspected him of stealing uh, funds from the treasury that belonged to Jesus, and Judas was helping himself, stealing the funds. Obviously, we can relate. There was a possible weakness there, because uh, if we understand this correctly, he had gone to uh, those opposing Jesus to try and get money. So there could be something in there. Uh, now, uh, looking at the information we have regarding Annas, uh, uh, who was high priest, <coughs> Caiaphas, who is now high priest, Annas no longer the high priest, but actually his son-in-law Caiaphas has taken over. Anna was, Annas was the high priest, but Caiaphas now in charge, uh, the son-in-law of Annas. Uh, Annas is known to be still very influential uh, in the religious circles. Caiaphas uh, making all final decisions, but Annas certainly pulling the strings behind him. Uh, some sources are going to have information that Annas had a grudge against Jesus. Uh, Annas had become very rich through the sale of the sacrificial animals and the money changers in the temple. Uh, Jesus, we know on several occasions, had actually gone into the temple 
and twice he had uh, got these people out that he was disgusted with that kind of behaviour. In actual fact, uh, just a few days ago, Jesus went into the temple clearing them out and a statement he made was, uh, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. So uh, a real uh, affiliation there to the temple, calling it his own house and also calling it a house of prayer, but making the accusation really against the religious world and the high priest to say that they were turning it into a marketplace. They were making money off of the back of these spiritual endeavours that they were supposed to be doing and uh, commonplace even today that people will do anything to make money out of religious means. Uh, we can only assume at this point that Annas had got worried about this, that it would affect his income, could have been the reason that he is behind this arrest. Uh, but as we say, it's amazing how angry people can get when you touch their money. Uh, Jesus, I believe, on one occasion saying that money is the root of all evil. Uh, not that money itself is evil, but it can cause so much greed and breakdown of relationship if it gets a hold. Uh, other sources telling us there's been confrontation between the religious leaders in the synagogues with Jesus on several occasions. Uh, 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 them not being happy with Jesus, them feeling insecure. Uh, Jesus really outmanoeuvring them uh, on, on every argument that they came across. Uh, so that is what has happened uh, before the arrest and uh, leading up to that. Now we understand that the trial took place, very strange, a trial took place at night. Uh, it was reported that Jesus was tried outside the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, and that had ended at about 5 a.m. That trial had ended at about 5 a.m. Uh, this morning. Uh, according to experts, they're saying that no trial should take place at night. And legally, uh, legally, the Jews have broken their own law. Uh, they cannot have a trial at night, and they have broken their own law. Uh, there are apparently two witnesses, many people are saying they're false witnesses, they're just being paid, but both witnesses making statements against Jesus and uh, testifying that they heard Jesus say, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Some saying this was an attack, that Jesus was going to pull the temple down. Others saying it's more of a picture language, that in actual fact he himself on many occasions claimed he was the temple of the living God. And if he was to fall or die, it would be raised to life in three days. Uh, Jesus choosing not to defend himself against such accusations, remaining quiet, uh, almost like, uh, like a lamb before the shearers is done, he has not opened his mouth. Uh, Caiaphas, the high priest, had ordered Jesus to tell them under oath if he was in actual fact the Son of God, to which Jesus replies, yes, it is as you say, uh, but I say to you all, so he's addressed all those in the crowd, the chief priests, Annas, Caiaphas, all of them there. In the future you will see the Son of Man, referring to himself we understand, sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One, Jehovah, and coming on the clouds of heaven. Phenomenal statement. Uh, I don't know if you can even envision that. Uh, a man arrested is, is, is making these statements. He seems undeterred by the fact that he's under arrest. Uh, Caiaphas has declared at this point that Jesus has been found guilty of blasphemy. Priests led Jesus away. Uh, people have started to spit 
at Jesus, uh, people jeering, a crowd began to gather around what's going on, a lot of movement throughout the night, going from one place to another. Uh, this is completely contradictory to Jewish law, which states uh, a defendant must not be mistreated. The law states a defendant must not be mistreated during trial. Uh, we also understand as well that in actual fact, uh, to complicate this even more, the Jewish law states that a defendant should not be mistreated and due to uh, Jews do not have the right to enforce the death penalty uh, because the Romans took it away from them under the occupation and uh, so now we understand to enforce that they uh, took Jesus to Pilate, Pilate, Roman governor here in Jerusalem, very, very well-known figure, uh, and he had been taken there. Uh, reports say that uh, two of Jesus' disciples uh, have managed to enter the courtyard of Caiaphas' residence, uh, where Jesus was being tried. Uh, they informed, uh, the informant one says was Peter. Apparently Peter himself was uh, apparently there. The other one uh, allegedly is John. John uh, we know again part of this so-called inner circle of Jesus uh, on many occasions rested his head on Jesus's chest. Uh, Peter was uh, recognized three times by the crowd uh, trying to get a glimpse of Jesus we believe but surprisingly and this really does surprise us uh, we understand that in actual fact Peter has denied knowing Jesus at all. It's actually denied that he ever knew Jesus. Yet he was seen with him on many occasions and he's claimed to be almost his right hand man. But apparently Peter three times before the cock had crowed this morning had actually denied Jesus at all. Wow. Well, this is just incredible. Uh, to make this story even more remarkable, it couldn't get even more disturbing. We now have news that uh, Judas Iscariot, Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, the 12 that have sold Jesus out, who had reportedly gone to the chief priest, has been found, his body has been found hanging. Uh, I say that again, the, the disciple Judas, who had sold Jesus out, they have found his body hanging. It appears to be a suicide that has taken place. It believe if we're just getting this, this news through, that he'd gone to see the chief priest after Jesus was arrested and condemned to die. Uh, witnesses are saying that Judas had returned the 30 pieces of silver uh, to them. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to them, uh, saying that he had sinned and betrayed an innocent man. Wow. He had betrayed an innocent man. This is really, really remarkable news. So much going on. I hope you can keep up with us. Please stick with us. We're going to see this through to the end. Uh, the priests told him apparently it wasn't their problem. They discarded him and uh, Judas, leaving their company, has hung himself, found hanging in a, uh, in a field, hung himself. Uh, the religious leaders just disregarding what has happened. He'd returned the money. Uh, it is so disappointing when you see... Jesus uh, giving people chance after chance, love upon love, this man of compassion and grace, yet in comparison with the religious world uh, who demand justice, demand punishment, demand cruelty, demand that people be separated and uh, do not seem to care about the consequences of a so-called uh, 
brother of theirs, Judas. Uh, nonetheless, he, we have a confirmed report that Jesus is, uh, Judas's body was found. Uh, we're now just reading the report. It's, uh, this was, previous stuff had taken place at 5. This is now taking, taking place at 6 a.m. Things have moved very, very fast. Jesus arrived outside Pilate's palace, outside the palace of Pilate. Uh, our men have followed, our reporters have followed. Uh, we're trying to keep you up to date with what happened. Jesus being taken to the Roman governor. Uh, very strange, very, very strange. Pilate has come out to talk to the religious leaders from his residence, his palace. Uh, allegedly, the religious leaders refused to go inside because it would make them ceremony, uh, ceremonially unclean. Uh, yet, we've already seen the colour of their hearts. But they're more concerned with their outside appearance. Uh, Pilate uh, had taken Jesus inside his palace to talk to him privately. So Jesus has had a private sitting with Pilate. Uh, the religious leaders had expected Pilate to execute the death sentence immediately uh, due to the fact that Jesus had made the statement he was the king of the Jews. Uh, that would be seen as direct opposition to Pilate. Uh, this was a charge the religious leaders have brought to Pilate. They're trying, from what I can understand, to not only use the charge of blasphemy, but try to imply that uh, Jesus was some sort of uh, political uh, uh, man of uh, trying to uprise and go against Pilate's authority as well, uh, to say that he was the son of God. Uh, to Pilate would be meaningless, the, the, the accusations of blasphemy would be meaningless to Pilate because Pilate obviously being Roman, not Jewish, so he would not uphold uh, necessarily those accusations. Uh, we're told after a few hours of interrogation, Pilate had addressed the crowd he had announced. Uh, amazingly, Pilate had found Jesus not guilty. He's addressed the multitudes, he's addressed the crowd and uh, discussed with the multitude and the religious leaders uh, that he could see no wrong. Uh, Pilate had offered to release Jesus. Remarkable. Uh, maybe, maybe things were going to turn. He offered to release him as it was custom. Uh, being Passover, the Roman governor would, would often release a, a gesture of goodwill, one of the prisoners, but the religious leaders amongst the crowd are refusing to receive the verdict. They are refusing Pilate's verdict. We're told uh, another man has been brought out, is, is uh, a strange figure. This man is uh, Barabbas popular figure, well known in Jewish societies, uh, is a rebel against Rome uh, and also known to be a murderer. So he is quite, uh, quite a nasty piece of work. He's tried uh, to, to get people whipped up against the Roman Empire, but also uh, is a convicted murderer. But strangely enough, the, the, the religious leaders were the first ones to shout out for the release of Barabbas instead of the release of Jesus. Sources tell us that Pilate has had Jesus whipped. Uh, he's hoping this would appease the crowd. It would settle people down if they saw that uh, Jesus underwent some kind of punishment. And again, he's, he's trying to appease the religious world. The religious world are always looking for punishment to be inflicted when Jesus instead removed punishment and rather brought grace, restoration and love. And we see again religiousness demanding punishment, a price be paid. Yet this Jesus uh, claims that he is the price for sinners. Sources tell us that the flogging that took place, 
information gives us uh, we've received that Jesus was actually stripped naked. They had removed his clothes and tied him to a whipping post and he had been beaten mercilessly with a whip. Uh, we know these whips are uh, made of strands of leather. At the end of each piece of leather there would be a piece of metal, bone or glass. So each time uh, Jesus was whipped, uh, this whip going across his body would actually tear out uh, chunks of flesh. Uh, uh, so it's an awful thing to imagine, but this, this Jesus, uh, meek, mild, has been, has been uh, horrifically, we understand, the report says horrifically tortured, whipped, uh, they've, they've, they've beaten him, he's been punched, they've pulled his beard out, uh, Jesus reportedly covered in, in blood from head to toe. What a horrific ordeal. It's widely known that in actual fact some prisoners do not even survive this kind of punishment. Uh, Pilate again then has brought Jesus out and presented him to the crowd. We understand very bizarrely his this is disturbing stuff, I'm afraid. Jesus was brought out, presented to the crowd, wearing a robe of purple, a Roman officer's robe they had put on him, and he has been seen wearing a crown of thorns. This crown has, this crown has been made of thorns, and the Roman soldiers have, have pushed it deep into his head, into his flesh, his face is covered in blood and he is just standing, uh, quite a, a sad uh, figure was seen of Jesus. They have ridiculed him, they have laughed at him by saying how king of the Jews, uh, hitting him in the face time and time again. Jesus looking in a very, very, very bad way now. Jesus looking very, very uh, physically uh, beaten, bruised, bloodied. His back is, is ploughed up like a bloodied field. Once again, Pilate announcing that he can't find anything to charge Jesus with under Roman law. Uh, Religious leaders, again, are furious and have continued to argue that Jesus should face the death penalty according to their laws, claiming to be the Son of God, being blasphemy. Again, our reports tell us that the actual shout of the religious leaders and the crowd shouting out at that point, crucify him, crucify him crucify him the chant getting louder and louder and all you could hear in that place is the chant of those wanting Jesus to be crucified crucify him crucify him crucify him they cried it almost sounds demonic extraordinary uh, please stay with us as we report these these extraordinary going on and things. Uh, we don't know where we're going with this report. Please, please hang on in there. Uh, crucifixion is hated by the Jews. Hated. It's, it's not a death penalty method that would ever be chosen. That book of Deuteronomy tells us that anyone who is hung on a tree is cursed of God. We would never agreed to such a death. If, if anything, Jesus could have been stoned as a form of death penalty, but not crucifixion. Uh, sources are telling us again, Pilate himself is looking uneasy. He looks in shock himself. Uh, Jesus, uh, they couldn't find anything wrong with him. Uh, the guilt, uh, apparently he'd been sent to Herod, Herod ruler of uh, Galilee because Jesus was a Galilean. Uh, Israel, as we know, is divided into four separate parts with different rulers. But Herod uh, uh, had previously had John the Baptist executed by uh, beheading. 
So it's looking as though Pilot is trying to get out of actually having to deal with this. The religious leaders are trying to get out of this as well, getting Pilot to deal with it. Pilot trying to get Herod to deal with it. It is like a game of tennis right now. But, but again, we were told that he was sent back to Pilate yet again because uh, Herod has said he can find no guilt. Amazing. Uh, we believe that Pilate was trying to, to do this to show Herod he trusted him. A uh, relationship between the two leaders we know has been frosty from time to time. Uh, again, hoping Herod might deal with this. Herod has sent him back and... Uh, Jesus has now been brought out to the crowd yet again. Again, there's an attempt to reason with the crowd. Pilate is desperately trying to free Jesus. He obviously believes this man is not guilty and possibly is this man the Son of God? Is he the long-awaited Messiah? Since midnight, Jesus has gone through, we understand, since midnight, Jesus has gone through three trials, a further investigation, a flogging, a whipping, and nearly, and nearly nine hours later, it still looks as though nobody will bring this to a conclusion. Pilate had made a statement, now turning to the crowd, he's, he's actually pleaded with the crowd and he made this statement, shall I crucify your king? Uh, Pilate there attempting to go straight to the heart of the public, uh, to which again the chief priests, the religious world, have risen up saying, we had no king but Caesar. Wow. We had no king but Caesar almost blasphemy by their own tongue. An amazing event took place after that. Uh, apparently Pilate had called for a bowl uh, to be bought out and allegedly there was some discussion with his wife saying that she believed this Jesus to be a good man or something. She'd had some kind of a dream and Pilate has washed his hands publicly and that is to say that he is not guilty of this man's blood. So he's washed his hand and uh, is basically said, you see to this yourself, I will have no part in it. But Pilate has handed Jesus over uh, to the religious leaders and Barabbas has been set free. Barabbas has been set free. So that's the story so far. We've been backtracking, trying to catch up, stay with us here at Effective Life Church News. Uh, we are now going live. It's 9am in the morning. We've tried to bring you up to spill with what's gone on. Remarkable news, very, very disturbing news. Uh, even myself, I'm beginning to just really feel quite disturbed at what's going on. You can clearly see the injustice of this whole situation. Uh, but you join us now, now live 9am and we are following the crucifixion of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, Jesus, who is carrying his own cross, uh, is a large wooden cross, uh, <coughs> put across his back. Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus is already blooded and uh, his shoulders are ripped apart. You can see the ligaments, his back looks like a ploughed field uh, with ligaments and muscle hanging. Uh, it's just an awful sight. You can see the ribs and then on top of that, They've now placed a cross on Jesus, expecting him to carry it. There are crowds on both sides of the street, lining the streets. The very streets that he came in on just a few days ago, uh, people declaring he was king. And the same faces are in the crowd. Occasionally, people are rushing out and they're pulling at his beard and they're punching and spitting at Jesus. Jesus 
desperately trying to move forward, carrying this cross upon his back. Jesus is very, very weak at this point. He is unable, he is unable to carry this cross. Uh, he appears physically, emotionally and mentally in complete tatters. Uh, he can barely walk upright due to the weight of the beam of the cross digging in to his worsening wounds. But Jesus, just in a state of real shock, almost unrecognisable uh, as the same man. Uh, he's lost so much blood, he's drenched from head to toe uh, due to the whipping. He's been without food, without drink without sleep since midnight through this awful situation through the rejection and abandonment from his disciples and those that he loved and cared for uh, amazingly the soldiers are pulling in a man he looks to be from north africa uh, and they're forcing him to carry to carry the cross with jesus jesus actually unable to carry this on his own any further and they have pulled in uh, a volunteer or they have put him under duress to do this but they've pulled him in and they are making their way to Calvary uh, commonly known as Golgotha or the place of the skull. Will you join us here this morning at these harrowing scenes uh, Jesus is, is still conscious. They're laying Jesus' body out. Uh, the soldiers are placing his hands stretched out wide and putting his feet together. They've laid him on top of the cross and they're using nails. They're not even tying Jesus, they're using nails and they are thudding the nails into the body of Jesus Christ in his hands, piercing his hands, piercing his feet. Uh, Jesus not, not fighting at all, not trying to restrain or pull his arm out, but again, as we said before, almost like a lamb before the shearers is done, Jesus is laying out his arms, willing to take this punishment. It looks as though there's another twist to this story. They've now placed Jesus. It looks like they're going to place the cross between two common thieves. Uh, by what I can see right now, the Roman soldiers are lifting the cross into position. And the cross with Jesus now to it. And there's a sudden thud as the cross has fallen into the hole to stand upright. The sudden jarring has, has poured the, the, the arms, the legs the, the, of Jesus out of joint. This is a disturbing sight to watch. There's a large crowd, disturbing scenes. Jesus just now to the cross now, it's, it's such an injustice, it's, it's such a mockery of our legal systems, it's such a mockery of humanity. Uh, we heard Jesus, yeah, yeah, Jesus is saying, he's made a statement, and Jesus has said, Father, forgive them, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. <laughs> Remarkable words. Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. This was a philosophy that he had taught for most of his ministry, telling people desperately to forgive one another. We can see Jesus' clothes are at the foot of the cross, and the Roman soldiers are actually casting lots. They're gambling with Jesus' clothes at the foot of the cross. Remarkable scenes. While this man dies in front of his mother and some of his disciples returning now, that they are casting lots for his clothes. 
the Roman soldiers. And we've noticed that uh, there is a plaque on the cross written by Pilate himself. He'd ordered that it be placed above the head of Jesus. And it says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Remarkable. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. What a statement for Pilate to make. He's actually gone, gone against the Roman Empire itself. And it's not only that, it has been written, written in uh, Aramaic, it's been written in Latin uh, and in Greek. Uh, it's written in three languages there. Greek uh, covers the social, uh, cultural wor world, uh, the world of philosophy, uh, Latin, uh, the political world. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's as if to say the Pilate is saying that Jesus is king or Lord over every dominion and type of people around the world. Uh, witnesses have gone, uh, witnesses have said the chief priests, Caiaphas, and the followers have gone absolutely mad. They are outraged by this and they have uh, uh, claimed, uh, well, they have asked Pilate to remove this from the cross. Pilate, though, refusing to take it down. Remarkable, absolutely remarkable. What a statement, refusing to take it down. Uh, just to bring you up to date, as we look now at these awful scenes here at Golgotha, uh, Jesus is no longer recognisable. He is no, there is no beauty there that we would desire him. Uh, due to his injuries, due to what the soldiers have done, they continue to mock him. Jesus is, is bloody, his, his face is swollen, he's, he's drenched in blood, there's flesh falling off of him. He is, he is a, a ghostly figure almost. He, he is, oh, it's like looking at the, a, a dead carcass of meat that has just been butchered indiscriminately. Uh, Again, just an awful, awful scene uh, due to the injuries. Uh, one of the soldiers saying, if, if you are the Son of God, uh, then save yourself. Uh, one of the thieves on the cross we can see is talking to Jesus at the moment. Uh, well, he's, he's actually talking to the other thief. Uh, bear in mind, Jesus has been crucified between two thieves. Uh, as if to make a statement, these were the people you care about, well, these are the people you can die with. Uh, but he has actually uh, said uh, to his fellow thief, do you not fear God since you and me are under the same sentence. We are being punished justifiably or justifiably. We are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man, this Jesus, has done nothing wrong. Remarkable words from the thief. And Jesus listening, seems to have the ability to listen to the plea of other people disregarding himself and Jesus re replying to the faith at the cross. And the faith has said, Jesus, addressing Jesus directly, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh, those words again, just coming from the faith. We don't know who the faith is. Maybe he heard Jesus preach one time, maybe he sat on the outside of crowd, but just saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh, seeming to accept or express that Jesus, recognising that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus replying there with the words, today you will be with me in paradise. Uh, paradise is uh, described as 
uh, a beautiful garden. In actual fact, the translation for that is the garden of the king. Jesus looking at this thief and he's saying to this thief who, who's starting off mocking Jesus and jeering Jesus when the cross was put in place, has turned around completely and seems to have received what his followers are saying is eternal life, that he could live in paradise. Jesus' mother arriving at the scene, Jesus' mother arriving at the scene again, uh, Mary, Mary uh, had Jesus at a very young age, uh, many people saying she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. It was a miraculous or divine pregnancy. Mary, his mother, arriving with some of the disciples. What must she be thinking at this time? Uh, Jesus, again, trying to push himself up to speak. Uh, all of his weight on his feet, we can see that the, the hole being made bigger through the weight of the body, uh, lunging down onto the now uh, that is holding him in place. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, stammering, uh, conjuring up, stammering up, whatever, trying to find the strength. He's made a statement, dear woman, here is your son. Is, we understand it. He's referred, yeah, Jesus is referred to the disciple next to her, which is John. John, who had fled before, now with Mary. And Jesus is talking to both of them and he's saying, Dear woman, here is your son. Son, here is your mother. Uh, okay, this, we, yep. Yet we understand that Jesus is actually asking John to look after Mary and take care of Mary in his obvious absence of death. John, very close to Jesus. Mary, heartbroken. Her thoughts must go back to when she apparently was told that he would be king, he would sit on the throne of David. Amazing. Now, this poor woman sees her son being crucified. Heartbreaking scene. She, she, is, she is just absolutely heartbroken. She's reaching out, wanting to touch him. She's wanting to wipe his face. She's wanting to, to hug her son, to hold him. But she can't. She's at a loss. John, with his arm around her, trying to bring comfort. But John is breaking down as well. It's now 3 p.m. here. We have been here all this time. It's now 3 p.m. We are at Galgotha Calvary and uh, the strangest phenomenon happening here. Uh, the sky has gone dark. It's been dark for three hours now uh, at noon, midday. Suddenly the sun was covered. You can see the moon. Uh, we are also told this is not an eclipse. This is not an everyday or yearly, annually eclipse. This is remarkable. Uh, it, is, it is just complete darkness out there now. Uh, Jesus again, you can just see his life ebbing away from him in this horrific scene. And yet yeah, Jesus again is he's struggling to make a statement. I almost wish he wouldn't. Uh, because every time he does this, it, it, it's putting him through such agony. But Jesus, now his, his eyes are covered in blood, his face, his body beginning to shake. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Jesus has just made this statement now. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus appearing to plead to God at this point. There were rumours that when he would die, that he would die for the sins of the world, that he would be punished not just by man, but actually by God, that in actual fact this is representation 
of Jesus the Messiah uh, receiving the wrath of God upon him now and Jesus desperately reaching out to the Father. There had always been a miracle before but now Jesus crying out those harrowing words. Uh, I'll read them again uh, and again it said my God my God why 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 have you forsaken me? Jesus throughout his ministry proclaimed that he's, he was on a spiritual mission of some spiritual significance. People have struggled to understand that completely. But in this darkness, it is an eerie darkness. This isn't a darkness like normal night time. It's only, it's only midday to three and it's been dark. Some sources are saying due to the spiritual side of this situation, which we don't really understand much about, that Jesus has now had the whole of hell, every demonic demon uh, has been released in the spiritual realm to now attack Jesus. And that's why this darkness is covering the earth right now. It's complete darkness. But the sky to be thick with demonic activity. Those demons that he cast out time and time and time again of suicide and leprosy and all sorts of things. The ones that he cast into the pigs. These, these, some people are saying these are now attacking Jesus in the spiritual realm. Jesus trying to hold on, looking to his father and yet saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We can refer back to, to Genesis chapter 13, uh, chapter 3, verse 15, a prophetic statement given in the Garden of Eden uh, not long after the creation and fall of Adam and Eve. And it says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring, and he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. That was a statement made by God the Father, Jehovah, uh, to Satan, the leader of the rebellion of fallen angels. And although uh, from that point we understand that Satan had always tried to stop the birth of Jesus taking place, and we can follow that up at another time, but we understand maybe slightly more that in actual fact behind the spiritual attack is Satan himself, the prince of darkness. Yet Jesus is still holding on. It's almost as if he cannot be killed, but he will decide himself when he will leave his body and lay his life down. The atmosphere is different now. Earlier there were chants, people jeering, laughing, spitting. Now it's very, very solemn. The crowds have left now. Uh, many people walking away, unable to watch this scene. There's a sense of fear in the city now. A sense of shame has come across the public, even the soldiers now. Uh, are no longer jeering or mocking Jesus. Yeah, Jesus has just made another statement. He said, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. And we can see that the soldiers have put a sponge of uh, like a wine vinegar or gall uh, uh, dipped uh, into that on a sponge. But Jesus, they've lifted it up to Jesus. He can't, no, nah, he can't take it. He can't, he can't even lift his head now. Nah to take this on board. These are harrowing things, they're eerie things. We've never seen anything like this. We did not expect this to be taking place. The absolute brutal treatment of an innocent man, yet, like the lamb before the shearers has done, he has not tried to defend himself. If 
only he had and he could have done, but he chose not to. His body is just breaking right now. People are weeping. Mary is now sitting in the dirt. John with her. There's, there's just a handful of people left now. People can't, can't even the soldiers are beginning to move away. Jesus is breathing, has become more laboured. His breaths are now becoming more and more occasional. Uh, Jesus, this so-called Messiah, dying here like a criminal for the sake of people he hasn't even met. And there's a, there's a bit of movement again, there's a bit of movement again from the cross here and yeah, yeah Jesus, Jesus making another, it looks like he's going to make, yeah, Jesus has just shouted out in a loud voice, it is finished. Jesus shouting out, it is finished. He has not said, I am finished. He has said, it is finished. You know, I believe that that is the work that he come to do at the cross. This place of being a sacrificial lamb, it's a real shame, it's awful. But he has declared that it is finished, not he is finished. And Jesus again, his body comforting now, it's, it's horrific. And Jesus again, it looks like he's going to try and speak again from the cross. Yeah. And he's saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. That word commit there we know to believe to mean to entrust. So Jesus speaking to God the Father now saying that he, he believes that uh, he can entrust his spirit into the hands of his Father. I commit my spirit into your hands. And it appears that Jesus, <coughs> it appears that Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus King of the Jews, Jesus the Carpenter, Jesus the Son of Mary, Jesus the Man of Grace, has died. Breaking news, Jesus Christ has died. The Messiah, the Saviour of the world. And I'm going to make a strong statement here. In the eyes of man, has been publicly murdered. But um, to his own thinking, he has declared himself, it is finished. Yeah. Okay, we've just had reports that there's been an earthquake. As Jesus died, breathed his last made that final statement that there has been an earthquake. Uh, we have received news, breaking news, this is breaking news, stay with us, breaking news that the vow in the temple, the vow in the temple has been torn from top to bottom, top to bottom. I'm just finding out from our experts what that means. Again, what, what does this mean? Uh, to our understanding, this means that, that there is no longer a division between man and God. Uh, our sources tell us that in the Jewish temple, the vow of the curtain uh, blocked an area named as the Holy of Holies, the holiest part of the temple where the presence of God might actually be found. Only the chief priest would be allowed to enter that area once a year to make a sacrificial sin offering on behalf of the people. Uh, a cord would be tied around his leg uh, because, you know, he could simply die in the presence of God. 
And so the body of the high priest could be retrieved without anybody else having to go in. So they would tie that cord, that rope around his leg. Uh, we've been told that symbolically uh, that this symbolizes, uh, the symbolism is that uh, Jesus is paying the penalty for man's sin. He is the ultimate sacrifice and now there is no longer any more sacrifices to be made by the high priest because the, the, uh, the vow in the temple has been wrenched from top to, body, uh, to bottom declaring that the death of uh, Jesus is the ultimate uh, price paid now, the ultimate sacrifice for all sin, past, present and of future generations to come. The price has been paid, the barrier of sin now has been removed. That man can now return to God because of Jesus Christ. Uh, we can see, just returning to, to the cross, we can see soldiers had just broken the legs, the leg bones of the two thieves in order to speed up their death. This would prevent them from being able to push themselves up, causing suffocation to take its uh, grip upon their body. Uh, but it looks like they have not broken Jesus' bones. His bones and his legs were not broken due to the fact that he had already passed away. Uh, instead, one of the soldiers has pierced Jesus in the side, uh, this going up into his heart, and there's, there's a, 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 a gushing of blood mixed with water coming out from the wound. Uh, the soldiers again just look horrified as to what's taking place. There's a massive hemorrhaging now from Jesus' body. Jesus has died, but his body hemorrhaging. Uh, I've just understood I'm going to receive a medical report on, in, on the crucifixion a medical report on crucifixion coming into us here uh, in the studio, a medical report. So let me just read this out as best I can. Uh, we have uh, a report here on the effects of crucifixion. So the effects of crucifixion which Jesus would have experienced is severe pain caused by the nails which would uh, emulate all over his body, the thudding of the cross being dropped into the hole would be ripping all his bones out of joint uh, as he was hanging by his arms and his legs being nailed, his breathing uh, become laboured, uh, unable to breathe uh, properly. He was able to breathe in but not able to breathe out. Uh, pushing himself up, causing pain every time he tried to take a breath. Uh, carbon dioxide would build up in his lungs and uh, blood due to the inability to breathe out. Uh, occasionally, as we saw Jesus trying to push the weight of his body up to either speak or to find breath. Uh, Jesus uh, gone through this horrible death. Uh, uh, normally crucifixion ends with the breaking of the victim's legs. We've just seen that happening to the thieves. Uh, so they can no longer push themselves up, therefore suffocating uh, fairly quickly. Uh, but we know Jesus has died after six hours of crucifixion and his legs were not broken. Uh, victims normally could take up to 24 hours to die. Uh, some have been known very rarely to last a couple of days if maybe they were tied to the cross. 
air, but eventually dying of suffocation and dehydration anyway. Uh, what's interesting in this particular medical report is the fact that a spear was used on Jesus' side uh, just to give peace of mind that he was actually dead, not a normal uh, procedure. Um, and we saw the escaping of blood was seen with other fluid. It looked like water, in actual fact. Uh, we're told by the experts that this is a, uh, a sack containing water that protects the heart. It lays around the heart, uh, uh, a strange sack there, uh, suggesting that in actual fact Jesus didn't die of suffocation as normal victims of crucifixion would, but in actual fact Jesus dying of heart failure. Jesus dying of heart failure in the circumstances. Uh, very rare that it happens, but with that gushing of water as well, it's commonly known as broken heart syndrome. The heart failure was likely caused to shock. Uh, Jesus had lost a lot of blood before he even began to walk the road to Golgotha, as you know. Uh, so, amazing reading there. Uh, <clears throat> that's the medical report that's come in. Uh, we're just seeing that uh, uh, Joseph, a member of the religious council, who did not, let me clarify, did not take part in the plot uh, against Jesus, is taking his body down from the cross. Jesus' body now being removed. Uh, apparently a request was given to Pilate, uh, which he has agreed that the body could be given to Joseph to be buried in a unused grave. Uh, obviously most of those being crucified, being criminals here today, would simply be put into a mass grave, uh, but they've removed Jesus from the others and his body uh, now lifeless. Uh, Mary's still trying to, to grab a hold of the body, uh, but yeah, Joseph has now gone with the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus has now been removed from the cross. Uh, I can only tell you it is a horrific scene. Uh, the cross itself uh, covered in blood. Covered in blood. Uh, who knows? Just maybe one day uh, this cross will be a symbol of hope, a reminder to the common man, to the rich, to the kings, to the leaders, that Jesus has sacrificed his life for them. Um, amazing situation here, uh, you've followed us through. Uh, we will continue to keep you up to date with any any news on this matter. Well, you join us uh, here at Effective Life church news and uh, we are updating you. It is now 40 days since the uh, death of Jesus Christ due to crucifixion and uh, again extraordinary scenes we witnessed there. Uh, 40 days have passed since then and uh, Jesus' body, don't forget, Jesus' body had disappeared from the tomb. Jesus' body had disappeared 
from the team. Uh, there have been many reported sightings of Jesus over the last 40 days that in actual fact Jesus is risen from the dead. Uh, looking back uh, uh, after Jesus' death, it was reported that despite the fact that it was the Sabbath, the religious leaders uh, had requested from Pilate uh, to put a guard over Jesus' tomb. Uh, Jesus had made a statement that after three days he would rise again. Uh, the religious leaders and uh, those opposing him desperate for this not to happen and concerned. So a Roman guard was put on the tomb, uh, the borrowed tomb uh, from Joseph. Uh, Pilate had agreed and not only had they put the guards on the tomb but they had sealed the tomb as well with the Roman seal going across the stone. This was sealed with a cord reaching across the stone and sealed with clay on either end. Uh, again, the religious leaders broke their own law by visiting Pilate on the Sabbath. Uh, so very easy to point the finger at everybody else but ignore their own sin. Uh, again, breaking the law uh, themselves. Uh, three days after the death of Jesus Christ, it was reported that the stone to the entrance of the tomb had been rolled away by an angel and that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. That in actual fact, this was not a rumour. This was a, a documented fact that Jesus had risen from the dead. Uh, soldiers, uh, the two guards that were there, had told the chief priests uh, what had happened, but allegedly the chief priests again had tried to bribe the guards, uh, saying uh, to put a statement out that the disciples of Jesus had actually taken the body, but we know that Jesus has been seen alive and well in various sightings with many infallible proofs. Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, one occasion meeting with his disciples, telling them to continue the work that he had started. Uh, uh, the, the Holy Spirit of God would accompany them and equip them that they would not be on their own, uh, not to lose hope uh, and to share this good news that he had risen, uh, that he had gone to his Father in heaven. Uh, it's reported that Jesus met on one occasion uh, over this 40 days that he had met on the beach with a group of his original disciples. Uh, they were fishing, uh, had gone back to their normal everyday Monday lives, mundane lives and were fishing and uh, Jesus calling them in to have breakfast with him on the beach and Peter allegedly jumped jumping out of the boat with absolute excitement and making his way. We understand that not only did that happen, but Peter had spent some time with Jesus and we understand that Peter was not only forgiven, but was restored completely. Peter, who had denied Christ three times, not only forgiven, but he has been restored in relationship with Jesus and relationship with the brethren. Uh, it, it's just an incredible thing because not only had he been restored, but we understand that Jesus had made him the leader of this new movement coming out of uh, Jerusalem, this new movement uh, called the church called the church itself, the body of Christ. And Peter is now leading this group, the one who had made such a horrific statement as to deny Christ has now been restored and in actual fact elevated to a place of leadership. Some are saying that he now carries the title 
of apostle. Amazing, 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 amazing. What a turnaround. The disciples uh, have reported in that Jesus had ascended into heaven uh, before their very eyes uh, with angels there as, as well, that his resurrected body, he has returned uh, allegedly to take the uh, throne in heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father, where all authority has been invested into him. The authority of life. A statement says, O oh death, where is your sting? The sting of death has been removed because humanity now has the opportunity to eternal life. Uh, none of us know when our day will come. It could be by a freak accident. It could be old age. Who knows? Maybe it could even be by a virus sweeping the world. But there is an opportunity of accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and spending an eternity with him. I'm going to close this report very, very shortly now. Uh, let me read a manuscript. Uh, this manuscript written by a predecessor of Jesus, uh, written by King David himself. King David, man of many mistakes, horrific mistakes, equally a man after God's own heart. Uh, Jesus, uh, through, uh, through his life, had referred to David. He took the title uh, of sitting on the throne of David. And I'm going to close by reading what some are saying uh, King David wrote this manuscript as a prophetic forerunner as to what the Messiah would experience physically, mentally, emotionally at the cross. So please bear with us as we just read this document. <coughs> and it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, I am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the Prince of Israel. In you, our fathers trusted, they trusted you and you delivered, you delivered them. They cried out to you and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm, I am not a man, scorned by men. Despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults at me, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord save him. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even from my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you, from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Do not be far from me now, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me, roaring lions tearing their prey, open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax within me, it has melted away within me. 
My strength is dried up like a pot shred. My tongue cleaves to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me, a band of evil men encircle me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and they cast lots for my clothes. But oh God, be not far off. By my strength, come quickly, help me, deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the roaring lion. Save me from the horn of the wild ox. And there's a sudden change in this prophetic statement. Clearly, about Jesus on the cross. I will declare your name to my brothers and in the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. You descendants of Jacob, honour him. Revere him, you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised nor disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him. But he has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fill you, I will fulfill my vow. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever and all the ends of the earth will remember the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nation. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. Those who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet born, for he has done it. The gospel demands a verdict. God bless you.